Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I think the first topic that I really want to kind of maybe start with on with Jose and then we kind of go through is that uh, topic of vertical integration. I think that was, that was um, a really kind of interesting um, debate there because on the one hand, like you're identifying obviously that like vertical integration goes with a lot of capital together and then automatically leads to IP being locked up and a kind of um, a single group of people benefiting from all this technology. At the same time, you also acknowledge the kind of the incredible speeds at which platforms can scale because of this vertical integration. Like we're looking at Katera, we're looking at Elon Musk. And it's this kind of, um, it's interesting because vertical integration as a kind of a technology is associated more with kind of authoritarian regimes with maybe, you know, how the Soviet Union was run, etc. But those technologies in the hands of this kind of venture capitalists um, are able to very, very quickly scale like incredible things, which, which uh, we're noticing now. So you're opposing um, vertical integration for this kind of re proprietary reasons. And um, what I'm wondering then is if we combine this more with politics, like obviously governments in general are also vertically integrated. So what I want to do is kind of tease out uh, a kind of a political position behind your opposition to vertical integration. Like, do you have a problem then with governments being vertically integrated as well? Or do you have a problem with vertical integration as a method? Or should we more look at essentially kind of who, who is enabling or who is organizing this vertical integration? Because obviously a lot of the kind of the, the arguments against vertical integration is kind of like bottom-up um, approach to things, a, a kind of arguments also against like big infrastructures. Um, they're essentially also kind of they have a kind of a libertarian smell around them as well, right? This kind of the, um, the argument that, um, you know, we don't want to, we're against for vertical integration uh, as, as a thing. Whereas I, I, like I would argue that I think a lot of things that need to be vertically integrated, like railways, um, for example, are, you know, democratic, are important to, to organize. So I, I, I want to kind of hear a little bit more kind of debate around this notion of vertical integration and I want to kind of raise that for example the last effort in um, the production of the biggest effort ever in the production of housing both on the east and on the west side of the Berlin Wall was vertically integrated that housed millions and millions of people it was organized by governments so why are we so opposed to vertical integration why do you want to devolve all this decision making away from these like larger infrastructures is that a political position is there a political position behind this? Well, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I definitely have a political position, but I don't think that that's the ultimate goal that I'm presenting here. It's got to do with uh, what are we optimizing for? If what we're optimizing form and performance, yes, vertical integration is the solution, right? Like, that's clear. Uh, but with that, you have people like Piketty and, uh, and, you know, many others that are kind of arguing for the growth of inequality, right? So I'm not saying that one is literally the result of the other one, but it seems that that model, and, and what was discussed earlier in the panel, the trickle-down model of innovation seems to be asymmetrically benefiting certain people, right? So I don't know what is the solution. I think that the problem needs to be addressed. What we need to be optimizing is how do we distribute wealth as we work. As we it seems like there, there's an inherent political position there because you're... And the question is, like, what, why would you be, for example, a government that is vertically integrating production of housing? Why is that not on Well, the problem, the, the difference is that in, if you're doing it in the private sector, vertical integration has, has been studied to lead to monopoly, right? But a, a monopoly, it's an illegal practice, right? Versus the government having, you know, vertically integrated, has, n doesn't have that kind of, or shouldn't, I guess have a bias towards, you know, their own internal benefit. It's just really serving kind of the, its constituency. So uh, I think that they're different. I mean, I'm not definitely opposed to use vertical integration in the government, but I'm not suggesting either that we should go back to a centralized form of government that it's, you know, vertically integrating all these processes. On the contrary, I suggest that the most challenging problem is kind of improve or optimize how collectives and distributed forms of fabrication could be implemented, right? If you really want to kind of distribute the wealth from, you know, production, you can deal with automation. I'm not arguing for 
less technology, I'm arguing that the organizations that actually achieve uh, the kind of performances that we want need to be further distributed among the, the kind of uh, people participating in the, in the wealth that is being produced as well. So um, someone like Lauren Lessig, which is an interesting figure, uh, you know, developing the, the Creative Commons uh, infrastructure and so on, he, uh, he's also developing a video game with a company uh, called Seed, I think. And it's interesting because he's also thinking, well, we don't have a model. If we talk about politics, it's not about this is the model that works or this is the model that doesn't. Let's just kind of tinker and figure out which are the models that actually create a more equitable distribution of value and wealth. So um, it, I, I don't say this is a particular political model I advocate for. I'm just certainly kind of advocating for a recalibration of our uh, distribution of wealth. And I think that the vertical integration is certainly one that it's, it's not helping. But so just um, because I, I mean you are you are referring mainly uh, or at least maybe because that's the focus of your research you are referring mainly to uh, manufacturing and distribution, right? Where this uh, lack of distribution of wealth is actually not really related to manufacturing, but is to all these other ledgers that um, that are above it, right? Um, so, uh, you know, and I would kind of, uh, I would like to hear more about how this distribution, like, or maybe starting from manufacturing, those layers get removed or also horizontally distributed um, and uh, leading to a more, uh, yeah, horizontal distribution of power. But, you know, let's say the, you know, where, where this, this um, wealth, this equality is mainly present is not yeah, in, in factories and workshops and makers, but, you know, it's in, in bankers, in, in marketing agencies, in, in all these kind of uh, ledgers um, that are above it. So. Yeah, so, of course, the issues of economic inequality has not completely to do with in the field of architecture and design, of course. Like, I mean, but when we architects have to address certain social issues, I think that it's uh, worth analyzing what are the kind of particular trends or particular kind of paradigms that contribute huh. in some degree to, um, to different forms of wealth distribution. So for instance, the idea of parts really kind of started with the the kind of calculation or being able to have precision, enough precision for having interchangeable parts. Things like a screw would actually feed standardized connections of all sorts of different places. But then you have people like Apple that would actually design a proprietary screw that you wouldn't be able to deal with, right? Like that it would actually seal off the iPhone from users. So of course you can actually design a new kind of tool to open that iPhone and so on. But there is a, an interest of creating a cut, this is what I call speciation, from a particular company through either copyright or in this case a particular tool that you don't have access to, to kind of maintain a closed ecosystem. Uh, an interchangeable part, which is what I guess the discrete, in my view, is kind of trying to reclaim back, is the fact that we could have multiple suppliers and potentially innovation from different places, unexpected innovation. The vertical integration model will centralize and dictate the you know, potentially design obsolescence of products, would create monopolies, and it won't allow for, it would actually stifle innovation, potentially, because it won't allow, you know, different alternative and even autonomous suppliers to kind of create a variation or, or a new protocol that could actually improve upon the established one. So I think that uh, the more I, more I see examples of vertical integration, it tends towards the uh, hoarding of power and the, the manipulation of that uh, asymmetry of power that comes from from achieving those performances at some point. I want to kind of um, sorry. I want to kind of uh, bring this also to this guys like this question of um, essentially like I have kind of two things I want to I want to throw back from from this discussion. Um, so one is like um, your work looks like it can only be produced by a heavily vertically integrated machine. The, that is one. The, 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 the other one is um, uh, a kind of a question 
I, uh, about production in a way, because Manu and uh, Jose uh, were talking a lot about in a way systems of production, right? Like there is, like Jose's project is in a way a kind of talking about a distributed system of production and starts to kind of propose also a certain materiality that is paired to that. And in a way, the same with, with Manu, there's a certain of notion of materiality. Uh, you, you are both very kind of um, uh, advocating a kind of a disinterest in tectonics and materiality. You're being very, no, no, very no, no, honest about it. Not tectonics, but, um, but in production. Yeah. Because production is 20th century, this is like Karl Marx, like, uh, and so on, that doesn't work anymore. Then you can 3D print everything, anywhere, instantly, the notion of production doesn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. And also, like, then also, architecture mm -hmm. is not, well, we're not interested in, like, that you produce architecture, mm -hmm. but that you live with all. What is the building? But so that's a huge so kind of like, fault line. With, yeah, with but Jose, it's also, yes? I think, like, uh, maybe it's more the, the difference because you're coming from construction and we're coming, like, very much from the urban. So the, the question how something is accessible, how something is owned or shared, like as a space, mm -hmm. is for that is more like the direction where we are coming from. But then when, like to my first question, so the question of like, I mean like to me it looks like it should be vertically integrated because of the scale of it and uh, because of the uniformity yeah, across exactly. the model. But like, would you, would you, would you disagree no. with that statement? Or would, like, how I, exactly, that? I, I disagree with that. Like, yeah. it is a, look, you said also like a, the, there's a bit like nostalgic, like hey, when you look to East West Berlin, it's kind of housing projects mm -hmm. uh, like from from the twenties or like really this, this radical modernism in a way, mm -hmm. which had like was like oriented into kind of like like large scale uh, housing for everyone. Or so. They say like really it's like this making architecture for the ninety nine percent. Okay, mm -hmm. had this mystics, but in a way like yeah, living in London you like this nostalgic like a lot, like having a flat which is like above 20, 30 square meters mm -hmm. and so on. So, but uh, this kind of architecture was just being enabled politically by vertical integration. So you needed actually big capital to move already like a build up at first like such heavy structure. Mm -hmm. So now this is completely obvious. So this we don't have anymore. It doesn't exist, it's just for private companies and so on, it uh, can be enabled. But now, like, what, so, like, it's also the question, how you can do something such a scale just through distributive or, like, through shared means? So, in a way, like, like, bottom up. So, it's very much achievable, such scales, but how you do it, actually, without structure. Without so, structure. so, you do imagine that this, um, this, this vast kind of landscapes, that those, in a way, are created with a bottom-up cooperative system, like you inscribe mm, that in the same kind it's of not the degree, discussion but more like as Jose how, and Molly yes. were outlined. It, it's more like how it's uh, in a way like, like owned or how you understand in a way like uh, uh, property relations or what kind of new form of property would have when you introduce distributed technologies like blockchain, etc., etc. So, and, and that's like a speculation also, but this vast landscapes, it's also like it's important, like as urbanists, we see this as, uh, as maps. It's more like showing the potentiality of, of possibilities. Right. So it's also like as an urban form of seeing this like is more, you know, like 100 years ago you were drawing a volume and saying like this kind of mass is now high res or whatever and so mm -hmm. on. So this is also in a way like an urban thinking with a kind of skeleton or kind of like tectonic mm -hmm. actually. Um, do, do you guys want to react a bit on that? Because, because I mean, like, like yeah. for me, this is an extremely interesting debate, right? Because it's like this kind of, I, like I think a lot of the history of the digital is intrinsically linked with modes of production. And a lot of architecture, I mean, like Semper, for example, the architect, it's all, all material, right? It's, it's, all, it's all materialist. And like if you, if you look also at modernism, modernism as project only existed, I would argue, in relation to a mode of production and an understanding of, you know, without concrete and steel, and new ideas of mass production and mechanization, you wouldn't really have modernism, in my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm very intrigued by this topic of like, especially because like these guys intensively almost, in a way, make their life of like creating, establishing systems of production and then kind of trying to understand architecture and you, you deliberately don't want to do that. So I'm, 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 I'm interested in that debate. If uh, the company would come and say to me, this is a product, Mm -hmm. Can you do the design with that? So I can exchange this product. It doesn't affect the design of digital. 
it keeps, uh, for me, uh, personally, in large scales, what we think about those gaps and resonance between parts is not related directly to the product, like on, mm -hmm. on such a large scale. I can mix the product of design uh, of objects, uh, let's say, as products, and bring those parts in relationship. So for me, it's exchangeable. Mm -hmm. I can scale it up, I can choose a, a different, I can make it from wood, I can make it from concrete. Mm -hmm. So that's why, let's say, from the large scale of perspective, experimentation, of course, uh, with that project of what, uh, for now for the Biennale, we offered, it's really open. What yeah. kind of material and that, that's it is. That's a beautiful is. argument. Like you and say, can... your architecture is in between the parts, so that's why you're not concerned with the fabrication of those parts, I because could, you're actually dealing with... I could in include yeah. the fabrication yeah. and take a specific yeah. product and link it differently, let's say, but I will not use those in-betweens. This mm. is what, what it's about. You yeah, know, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's interesting, and I, I think that's a very good point. No? And I, how, how we move also architecture towards, uh, towards a product that is repeatable, and it's, um, so basically it amplifies efficiency. Like for me, I think the... I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that uh, that uh, vertical integration is uh, is bad or is uh, is really right wing or whatever. I mean, because you are vertically integrated. It is. So you because should I'm, argue I'm vertically against. integrated. <laughs> uh, no, but I think the the problem uh, with vertical uh, integration is the is the appearances of uh, all these ledges that you can you can skip. So I think you can be still. You know, in a combination in between horizontal and, and, and vertical, you can have a stuff that is di distributed. And you need to always necessarily have, maybe at a more local level, a vertically integrated structure. I think the problem uh, with the evolution of those kind of structures, like if you look at the, the UK, for example, right, is from the management to the, the actual uh, manufacturing and, uh, and organizing of, uh, of the real estate, you know, there all these like bureaucratic levels that are just increasing the the, uh, the cost of uh, of making by not making yeah so that's that's where I see also a different mode of production uh, very interesting like if we if we could if we could associate the architecture more to a to a product development right and then so a product for example when you are like selling pantan chairs everywhere in the world for example or any kit for building something you can have a, a factory anywhere in the world. So shipping starts to stop being an issue, yeah? And, and then this concept of, uh, of universality basically avoids the necessity of local elements that are vertically controlling the assembly of those pieces, right? Or how those factories get produced. And that's, that's again, uh, the key of uh, car manufacturing, right? Like car manufacturing uh, is, like cars are accessible today and we have cars because the mode of production that we use for uh, creating those machines, because we we can uh, distribute it, uh, uh, distribute production around the world, right? And uh, and I think that's something that uh, in in architecture we we just simply haven't haven't achieved or haven't considered. So by having uh, one part or a set of parts that can be created, or yes, can, they can be 3D printed. But so tomorrow. you're actually arguing now the opposite of what was this saying. Like you're saying that actually taking the most vertically integrated companies in the world, car companies, as the example yes. to follow for architecture. So, yes. Because the, you're, you're, you're saying Sorry. that that yeah. vertical integration made the products more accessible. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and I don't, I, yeah, exactly. I think vertical integration in this case so makes Katera, the product Katera more. is cool. Then in that. I'm not saying that this <laughs> is perfect, but, uh, but I, I think that, for example, you know, the Elon Musk uh, example, uh, he released all the, all the patents. Like, it, there is not where he's making money. I think the criticism to that vertical integration is in, in, in the rest of the machine, not in the production of the car. I think mm -hmm. everything related to the actual production of the car at the development of the technology to accelerate a, a technical evolution, I think that's actually a very good example and should probably be, uh, at least in, in a big part, vertically integrated. Sorry. Maybe a reaction of Jose, and, or you're, you're fine? Or no. Otherwise, I mean, we open I mean, it. We don't have to agree with yeah. <laughs> um, Are there any questions from the, from the audience, like for uh, this guy? Otherwise, we have a little break. Questions? No questions? No? Okay, then, uh, oh, there is one. Mm -hmm. Ramon? Ramon has a question. <laughs> I think Ramon has a question, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have a question, Ramon? No, I'm not. He has a question. You were right. 
Um, maybe something a bit related to uh, Jose, uh, like w when you were showing like the different kind of softwares and so on. Uh, so where do you see kind of uh, the question of like um, the, the authoring these kind of processes and where do you think you as like, I don't know, let's say in 20 years as an architect, um, are we still kind of designing or would you kind of let crowds like design uh, via like kind of computer games and, and how do you see like this relationship playing out? For my, you mean for my practice? Like, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I take a lot of enjoyment from seeing the tools that I do or develop being used in different contexts. Like when I did the, the first kind of libraries of code that I did for processing, um, when I started seeing like some, I don't know, some theater kind of performance using the library, that was incredibly inspiring for me. And I never claim ownership for that work. It's a, you're just creating kind of a library. And this is a modeling software, right? So what we can do in, in, in the software is just, uh, you know, open-ended. And I would never claim ownership over anybody's design. I would like to be able to design within the software. And, and I'm sure that, I mean, we're not there yet. I think it's pretty rudimentary. It's much more of a game at, the point, at this point. So I, I still use hybrid forms of, of modeling for design. But I would like to kind of be able to use the, the platform that we are kind of putting forward so that we kind of contribute to a community with our own designs and, and, and create patterns that people could download. Um, but yeah, I see the convergence between design and, and this platform. I don't think that I'm going to become a, just a game designer. And, but I, I do claim ownership on the tool making, right? Because I think that there are some innovative ideas there. What I kind of try to present today is that you know, the scope of a software is always specific and, you know, you could have another software that is for management of, of let's say, robots and another software or maybe a plugin for, for the, I don't know, calculation of schedules of workers and whatnot, right? But when, the moment that you start connecting some of those things together, you, you have something that looks very different and perhaps influences the way you design and think about design um, through the challenges of other what is perhaps other discipline, right? So I think that that's interesting. And so I, I do claim ownership over the ideas on, on the software. You know, participants and players will, in my view, always own their own production. And whatever we design within the software, like normally would, would have its own kind of authorship as well. So I, I, that's the way I kind of present it. Okay, cool. Thanks guys. So while we come back here, I think in Martin, when do we come back? In 15 minutes. Okay. Thanks.